Well, guys, we just finished up our Washington Island adventure last weekend, and we had a lot of great success, obviously, salmon fishing, and we also had some nice fish bass fishing as well. And, you know, as you know, Tim, we got a lot of, we got a lot of feedback from some of the guys who watched that show, and they saw us catching those fish on senkles. And I think a lot of people didn't normally put senkles and smallmouth bass fishing together, but we decided to expand on that a little bit this week. Well, yeah, you know, we did a show, and I'll tell you what, I don't think we could get much better of a show uh, fishing all senkles, fishing them in a variety of different ways, you know, some deep water, some shallow water. And that's one nice thing about these senkles is that you can fish them in as shallow as a foot and a half, two foot of water, exactly. and you can fish them down to 15 to 20 feet and they do catch a lot of fish. Absolutely, they're super versatile bait, they're a super effective bait, and the cool thing about them is, is there's not a lot of people using them, and a lot of people aren't using them in the proper way to catch these big smallmouth. So that's what we're gonna do this week, guys. We're gonna hit the water, we're gonna show you exactly how and where we fish these sinkles, and we're gonna show you how effective a bait they can be. Stay tuned, we'll be back in about one minute. There's one right there. there he is. And like we said, guys, we're fishing Senkos today. This is a pretty nice smallmouth right here. Real nice one. When it comes to smallmouths, this is one of the best and most overlooked baits that you're ever gonna see. And this guy is feisty. That was just a beautiful smallmouth bass right there. Look where he's hooked. Right in the top of the mouth. And the one thing about Senkos, and we're gonna get into some pretty good detail here today, the rigging, the technique, the type of equipment you're using, it's all critical in producing big fish like this, okay? Let's get this guy back in the water. There he goes. And the thing about Senko fishing, guys, everything, like I said, has to be right, you know. It's a super effective bait, but it's kind of a do-nothing bait. So we're going to get into some details, but let's go get another fish first. Oh, here's one. I'll tell you what. This is a nice fish. Did you see how I set the hook on that? I just kind of pulled. I didn't just give a real hard jerk. It's really, really critical when you're fishing Sankos, especially when they're really not aggressive. Oh, there's another one swimming. Uh, when they're really not real aggressive, you just, you know, you just finesse them. It's kind of a lazy way of fishing. Cast the bait out there, you let it sink down, and you're just, you just wait to feel that tick. That's why, you know, we're running a braid here. You know, we're running that Duracast 10 pound and we've got a nice flow carbon leader on. And uh, boy, another quality fish. All right, boy, a dandy. And again, just hooked right in the snout, right in the nose. I tell you, these hooks, that's really one of the critical things. This is a two watt and uh, really critical for fishing these Sankos. Beautiful fish. And again, Sankos, it's kind of a finesse bite. The way we're fishing them today, ultra slow. We're just feeling those pickups. You just feel a little tick. You just, you know, 
put tension on them. You don't necessarily have to jab them real hard. And uh, just another quality fish. I'm gonna let this guy go. See if we can put a few more of these in the boat. working sinkles, the key to fishing these things is really not to fish them. And it's a concept a lot of anglers struggle with at times and we all get a little anxious and a little excited when we're fishing, especially if the fish are biting. We want to overwork bait sometimes. Sinkles, you have to be sure all we're doing is just lifting the rod and letting the bait fall. The bait is, is the action of this bait happens when it falls. And as it's dropping through the water column, the legs on it, the way we have it rigged, the legs on it are just falling. We have it rigged in that wacky style. And the technique is just to let the bait fall. You don't want to overwork it. All you want to do is lift the bait up off the bottom and let it fall right back down. And these fish are biting 95% of the time on the fall. So the key thing is, is not to overwork it. As you work it too much, if you're popping it too much and doing too much to it, the fish basically they turn off of it. They really don't strike it quite as often if it's overworked. So keep that in mind and just kind of just let the bait work itself and you're going to catch a lot more fish with that method. There's one right there. So we talked about it. As you can see, I wasn't doing anything with that bait at the time. I was just letting it, well, it's a nice fish too. I was just letting the bait work itself. And when you get on these deep flats like we're fishing here, that is just a great way. Now he's got two or three fish with him right here. It's just a great way to fish him. Just, oh, well, he came off, but that's all right. It's just, it shows you that's the technique you want to use. You want to make sure that you just drift through, keep contact with the bait. You don't want it to be falling slack all the time, but follow those little ideas and you're going to catch a lot of fish on sinkles. Oh, there we go, right there. I'll tell you what, you know that's how we got the bow going into the waves and uh, you know nothing really changed. They're still biting kind of the same way, maybe a little bit more aggressive. Um, but at least we got some good bulk control now. This seems to be a really nice fish. And I'll tell you what, the wind just keeps getting stronger and stronger. We'll get this one in here. And it's always funny, whenever you got the wind and then you got to try to hand land these fish, it always becomes, <laughs> it always becomes an experience. And I can tell you this, it's probably a good idea that you keep a small net in the boat just for situations like this. You know, we're fishing out of a bass boat here. We're kind of close to the water, but you want to be a little bit safer. And on a day like today, as the wind picks up, having a net in the boat is probably a good idea. We're going to try to get him in real quick. Oh, I'll tell you what, another one hooked just right in the snoot. Boy, a beautiful fish, and I'll tell you what, you get out here this time of the year, you're fishing, you know, that 15 foot of water or more. This time of the year is a great year fishing Sankos, and some of the techniques we hope will help you catch some of these fish. You know, guys, Sankos have been the top choice for us today, and as you can see, they're putting a lot of big smallmouths in the boat for us. But rigging Sankos and how you set them up is critical in terms of the success you're going to have with them. We like to use a five inch Senko color choice. There's a lot of different color choices. You kind of just got to experiment. We like darker colors on average. This one right here can be a good bait, but it's going to help us illustrate a little easier how we rig them. Um, what we do is we take a tool, and it's a specially designed tool used for rigging Senkos. Um, you put your little O-rings, which you can get at any sporting goods store, or you can get them at a lot of hardware stores as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the O-ring over the top of the Senko, and then we're going to put our hook in between the O-ring and the Senko. That's going to help save you a lot of baits you know, instead of tearing off as often as you would without them. And it also helps the bait fall properly and get a nice vertical fall. All you do, you take your Senko, you put it inside the tool, you take your little O-ring, you slide it over the top of the bait, you make sure if you have to adjust it a little bit, you just make sure that that O-ring is right in the middle, right on top. That way when you put the hook in, the bait falls perfectly level, and they get your little flapping legs here, and that's what triggers these big smallmouths to bite. Now, when it comes to the hook, we use a two-aught or a three-aught Gamagatsu short-shanked wide gap. It's actually a finesse live bait hook, but it really works well for these smallmouths. 
lot of options on hooks, a lot of custom made wacky rig style hooks, and you can experiment with them, but we've done some of that, and this Gamakatsu hook really is a good choice. Just take the hook, go right underneath the O-ring, so it's in between the O-ring and the Senko itself, cast it out, it's gonna slide up the line a lot of times when you'll get a fish on it, like that. That way you can just re-rig it at the end and the bait's not getting torn up every time a fish hits, whether you miss them or catch them, it's gonna get you a lot more fish off of each bait and it also presents it properly. Use a few of these ideas, try some Senkos this year for smallmouths and I guarantee you, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised at the amount of big fish you'll catch with them. There's one, nice one too. Well, as we talked about a little bit ago, the conditions are deteriorating on us. This is a nice fish. The wind is really starting to blow now. And we kind of gave you a few ideas on how to, how to take advantage of that wind. And the key is, that's a beautiful fish. Just a beautiful Door County smallmouth, caught on a Senko. And like we said, you got to take advantage of this wind. You got to be careful with it. You got to make sure you don't push the limits too far, especially when you're fishing in a smaller boat or a lower profile boat like we are today. But anytime you get wind like this, usually it triggers big fish like this to bite. Um, take advantage of these fish. Take advantage of the system that we're showing you today. How to use these Senkos. They're underutilized. Most people aren't using them the way they're supposed to be used. And a lot of guys just don't think about them for smallmouths. But here's proof right here. They catch big ones. Man, here we go. Boy, just a real, re whoa, 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 real subtle bite. And uh, kind of like right under the boat. It's kind of interesting what we're doing. Okay. Oh, try that again. Here we go. Oh, that nice quality fish there, I'll tell you what. And again, you know you're doing things right. You know, look where that hook is. It's right in the top of the snoot, hooked in there pretty good. You got to do a little bit to get them out of there. Just another quality fish. And I'll tell you what. You know, we're picking at them and we're, you know, we're putting some good numbers in the boat. And all the fish right now today, we're not really catching any small ones. We've had a couple, but they've all been, you know, generally that, that three to three and a half, maybe some approaching four pounds. Good quality fish. And I'll tell you what, these Senkos, when you finesse them, it's a real tough bait to beat. Oh, there he is. Another one. Things just fight so hard. They're just so much fun to catch. And this is such a such a unique way to fish them. It's just this is just a beautiful fish. Not the biggest fish of the day, but an absolute beautiful one. I got him. Just another beautiful Senko fish and you know, if you apply some of the things that we've done today, some of the things that we've shown you, you're going to catch a lot of fish like this. These are, these are just average size fish. I mean, it's a beautiful fish, but it's nothing out of the norm up here. Difference is, is you have to present something a little different sometimes. And these bigger fish like this one, they'll go after things that they haven't seen as much of. And a Senko is a classic example of that thing. So take advantage of this fishery while you got a chance, because there's just a pile of these things up here in Northern Door County. I'll tell you what, one of the things when you're Sanko fishing, it really is important to have great equipment and really the right action equipment. You know, today, you know, we're using uh, kind of a new series of rod by Shimano. This happens to be a 7.6 worm and jig rod. It's a crucial. They make other models in a little bit lesser dollar, uh, but uh, the right action is really key. This is a 7.6 foot rod. Uh, I coupled this thing up with a 4000 series reel. You could put a 2000 or 2500 series reel on it. The reason we go with a little bit bigger reel, we get a little bit more casting distance. And I'll tell you what, one of the real key things to this whole outfit is how, you know, what kind of string you have on it. Uh, we got 10 pound Duracast on here. You know, that's one of our favorite lines we'd like to use. And we always couple that with about a three to four foot fluorocarbon leader. You know, anywhere from 10, 12 pound test uh, on that leader. And I'll tell you what, that combination is really going to put a lot of fish in your boat. It's got great sensitivity. The rod's got plenty of power. And I'll tell you, you get yourself a combo like this and you're going to notice the difference when you're out fishing. Got another one on here. And you know, we're just pecking away at them, you know. Just pecking that way. This is actually a pretty nice fish here too. Real nice one. 
Oh, wow, I'll tell you what. Probably the nicest one we've caught so far. I bet you that sucker's pushing close to four pounds. And that's what you can catch when you're out here. You know, we're finesse fishing these Sankos. Um, we're just really just dragging bottom, and it's been producing fish. And so far, boy, this is a dandy. Well, guys, I got a big one on here, and the conditions are deteriorating on us. And I'll tell you, this is a beautiful fish. And these are the conditions where you want to take advantage of the fishing. You got to keep. That's a beautiful smallmouth. Hooked right in the corner like we like them. You can see the unique design of that hook right here. And that's a, that's a real key to this whole system. Beautiful fish like this. Gorgeous Door County smallmouth. You can catch a lot of these fish if you take some of what we talked about today, put it into use, use some Senkos, rig them up like we showed you. You're going to catch a pile of these fish this year. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Be sure to tune in next week for another brand new episode of Fish Door County TV.